welcome back. Oops, <laughs> we've got the wrong title there. We'll get that uh, fixed for our current group here. And uh, we are doing short form in a nutshell is our current panel. We've got some amazing panelists uh, here from you, for you today from all over the world. So without any further ado, I'll let them uh, go ahead and introduce themselves and we'll get started to talk about the amazing format of short form comics. Um, hi everyone, my name is uh, Lynn Darrow and I am uh, nominated for, um, <laughs> I guess the reason I'm here is that I'm nominated for uh, the short form comic In Search of Absent Pigments, which I wrote um, and then was subsequently illustrated by the amazing Alex Sasan. Um, and so I go by she, her pronouns, and I'm really excited to be here and hear about um, what motivated everyone else to, to write these shorter form comics. So thanks. Uh, hi, I'm Alex. Pronouns are him or they. And I'm the artist of In Search of Absent Pigments with Lynn, the amazing, wonderful Lynn. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to hear what everyone has to say. It is 1 a.m. for me, so... I'm a little bit loopy, but it'll be okay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's good to be here. Um, my name is Brina Nunez. I'm calling from the Bay Area. I use uh, she, her, or they, them pronouns. And I um, I never got to be a judge. This is the first time we got to be a judge. So I'm really glad it was for this expo because it means so much to me and just to, like, Add up more um, to the, like Bay Area, like comics history, but also like internationally as well. So I'm really happy to be here. Okay, uh, I'm Lawrence Sundell. I use he they pronouns. I'm also in the Bay in the next room next to Brina. So <laughs> funny looking at them, even I can hear them. Uh, I was also a judge, and yeah, it's really cool. Um, it's really cool to get to read all. Of with comics you don't get to realize how many different styles there are in comics and doing something like this it's all queer which is like yeah so i'm just happy to be here uh hi everyone uh i'm ina i'm from southeast asia um i'm really excited to be here um, my pronouns are she her and i wrote the short comic one day out for a new narrative thank you so much for having me here i'm excited to hear everyone So, how, it's always hard getting a conversation going, it's like, where do I, it's like that blank page, right? Where do I start? Uh, so I'm gonna put uh, Brina and Lawrence on uh, the hot spot. And as judges, oh, Brina, Brina left to avoid this situation and put you on your own, Lawrence. So. Oh, there we go. We got Brina back. Welcome back, Brina. I thought, I thought you were ditching us to get out of. <laughs> <laughs> being put in that spot. Um, so, as judges, uh, are there is there anything you noticed about short form or any questions that came up as you were reading work, the work of the finalists that are here um, that you want to follow up on or, or things you noticed about their work? What do you think, Lawrence? <laughs> Yeah, I, it, it's weird being a judge because if anyone that knows me knows me, knows how I feel about comics and all comics are just comics to me. So my lens was mostly focusing on what was the story you were telling and how did you convey it? And um, yeah, that's it. Like, I don't care about technical skill or like, I want to know what the story was and then how you conveyed it and then what moments you use, whatever you have in your toolbox to kind of bring that out. So it wasn't like a, Oh, this is such a pretty comic. It was like, well, what's the story? And I love these stories. And short form has a thing about condensing like really intense topics, but still making it kind of full at the same time, which I don't think it gets a lot of credit for doing. So, y'all all did a great job, by the way. I, I'm not just saying that. Like, it was really cool to read the comics, and we just, yeah, it's a nice Thank way you. to end the weekend. Thank you. 
Yeah, I feel like for me, um, it's a huge privilege and blessing to be surrounded by short form comics because we have like so many to go back to from attending zine fests and um, I feel like it's just a natural way to like consume comics, at least for me. It almost feels like it's challenge it's like such a big challenge to do. You have like all of these um, different parts of yourself you're just trying to like squish into like maybe five or even three pages. Like it's not easy to do that in comics. So I commend people for doing it in such a short like amount of like real estate for lack of better terms. Um, I also feel like if I'm feeling like I've just been like given like this very intimate like um, experience from like the piece, I mean, that's when I feel like, oh, like this thing just made me tear up a little bit. Like that's when I feel like, oh, this is like a beautiful piece, a beautiful comic that is, ugh, it's also just accessible and vulnerable at the same time. And to capture like all of these like elements into one beautiful package is like, ugh, it, that's what makes comics for me such a beautiful medium. And all of y'all like touched my heartstrings in so many ways. And it, especially with us being in quarantine right now, like if we feel, or I don't want to speak for both of us, but I definitely feel like isolated from being with so many people, so many friends. Thank God for the internet though, but <laughs> it felt nice to feel the semblance of home through all of your work. Mm. Sorry, Thank I went you on so much. Uh, <laughs> I can actually really kind of relate to that last part of the statement with being uh, in lockdown and quarantine and all that kind of stuff uh, over the last couple of months. There were, I don't know if maybe I was just online more or if there actually were more short comics just like on Twitter and on social media. But I definitely felt like that was a really, like I, I admit that I don't, often go out of my way to like search for short comics usually I buy them as like zines at conventions or you know I just like happen upon them um but there is something kind of unifying and kind of um that that was giving a sense of community about reading everyone's experiences during uh COVID-19 especially when everyone is like in the same industry as people I know um so yeah I guess it was really nice to see a ton of short stories on Twitter is what I'm really meaning to say so I get it. I wonder if one thing too that's really powerful about about short form in particular as a medium is that it it forces you to condense all of that the intense emotion. At least I always write about it. I like never write about chill emotion um, into a short page, and so it means that instead of drawing out a sense of atmosphere or tone or an emotion, you're thrown right into it, and you have to kind of you're confronted with it. Um, I think that depends on the medium and the genre, but I think that for me, what is interesting about the short comic is that it it doesn't have a lot of real estate, Brina, I think you're right, to slowly ease you into something. Or if it does, it's tricking you into thinking that it's slowly easing you in. Um, it, it can play tricks on your mind in like a really cool way. And so I think, um, I think that's one of the neat things that a short comic can do is it throws you into that that emotion and then asks you, it invites you in, in a, in a way that um, over a longer form comic takes a little longer to get going or a little longer to find the hook. Um, I think that's one of the strengths of the short form format in general. And, you know, is there anything that pulls you to the short form format? Um... For me, I did it because my editor at New Narrative asked me to um, make a short comic for them because they're um, a publication, like journalism publication in Southeast Asia. So uh, the pages were limited to five or six pages. So the difficult thing for me when I was trying to write it was um, how do I convey a lot of nuances into such a short form because when when you're um when you're a queer person raised in a um, muslim background you 
it's difficult for you to convey your feelings without being, you know, like, um, it's difficult for you to be critical of your surroundings without being deemed as an Islamophobe or something. So it needs a lot of nuance and yeah, it's, it's difficult. It's kind of challenging to put it into only five pages. Yeah, we've actually, there's been a lot of that uh, religion or spirituality and queerness this year in the, the finalists and submissions that in instead of um, always seeing religion as the, the enemy, that at least in, in a lot of the English language work that we're seeing, there's been a shift to how can we show that there is room for religion and spirituality and being queer, how can these not be on opposite sides? Um, so I think that that's a really important sort of trend to, to see in, in what's come through this year. Um, and you mentioned nuance also, I think this is a good question for this form. Um, and with such limited space, how do you as creators um, put nuance and the, the sort of world building into your stories um, and then as judges, what do you see from the short form in terms of how creators are doing this? Um, so when, for me, uh, when I tried to write the comic, um, I tried to um, insert the context of how the queer rights in this uh, region is like. So, And then I tried to put it into a few panels, but in a personal way. So like uh, in like in my comic, I in my comic I mentioned about a queer artist who was persecuted by by the people here, and then I also mentioned about the women's march where people could fly the white flags. So it gives uh, the nuance that I wanted to achieve. Um, I think I, I often feel as though um, there's this pressure, and maybe it's self-imposed, um, to when you're writing a queer story to, to fit certain tropes of a queer story. Um, and I think that often queer stories are dichotomized into being um, stories entirely about how much it sucks to be queer. Um, or there's, there's this simultaneous pressure of people need really hopeful and happy and fluffy stories as a balm to that history. Um, and I think that it, there's no way of winning really because everyone feels pressure to deliver all of these different things. And it can be sometimes difficult to say, I just want to tell a human story that is, is not necessarily so neat that it fits into either of those boxes. Um, I want to tell stories of lives that have good and bad in them. Um, and sometimes the struggle comes from queerness and sometimes it comes from just internal flaws that are not necessarily specific to queerness, but find certain forms when one is queer. Um, and so I, I guess it's not necessarily um, a, a pressure. It's more just, there is this, you think about how your stuff is appearing to other people and how it's marketed and you worry that you'll fall into those dichotomies of this is good or this is bad, or I'm saying this about queerness in general. Um, and so one thing that is kind of nice about the short form, I guess, it, is that it kind of forces you to get to the, to the meat of the story right away. And for me, it was kind of nice that I didn't have all that space to draw out the debate of, um, you know, what am I saying about queerness? It was kind of nice just to leave a lot of that to the art in our case, um, which then Alex carried out brilliantly. Um, so it, it's kind of nice, it almost forces you to edit in a way, to get to the heart of things instead of worrying too much about trying to prevaricate or worrying too much about trying to frame yourself or in, in a certain way. Um, you know, I don't know if you found that like a similar benefit to, to short um, comics in that way, but I, I did anyway. Um, yeah, um, was for me, sorry. Okay, uh, for me particularly because I come from the global south, there's a tendency for me to avoid you know, like the victim narrative, like we are the victim and we need saving, especially that I know that my audience is international. So yeah, the short form comic helps a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like, 
it, it kind of relates to what we were talking about rather than what Lynn just said. Although, like, amazingly put, I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, but there's that's actually interesting what you said about how you had to kind of condense the, the text into five pages. Because the thing that kind of strikes me about your comic that I really love is that it's not like a wall of text. I, I was almost surprised to hear that you had this like struggle because it's actually like, I feel like a lot of the vulnerability in it and like the beauty in it actually comes from the way that the art, I guess, shines. So like the paneling and all that kind of stuff and how even the lettering and like how stuff is arranged, um, even like as much as at least as the text. And so I don't know, it's interesting because in short form, I think in order to be at least well, like at least to feel for me as though I'm successful in it is to have so, some sort of a balance and a marriage of both like the story and the visuals working together like even more closely knit than usual. Um, so, you know, if I do a really long comic and one of the pages is just like, it's not great. Well, I'm just like, yeah, whatever. It's fine. You know, there's 400 pages in this story. One of them doesn't have to be great. It's cool. Uh, and in a short comic, I think, like, first that pressure is on. But then also, like, it does force you to, like Lynn said, I guess, get to the point and make it all, like, thematically and visually coherent. I guess, hopefully. I wonder, too, if that's kind of, I think, that uh, one thing that both of our comics have in common is um, it's a little lighter on dialogue and it relies very heavily on the visuals. And I wonder if that's one way that we create nuance is by leaving a little bit more to our mm -hmm. audience as opposed to um, relying heavily on dialogue. Instead, there's a, I think there's a big trust that we put in our audience to, um, you know, as you suggest, not come away with it with an interpretation that is, is based on some form of prejudice. And that's both really scary and I think kind of freeing, at least for me. It's, it's kind of both again at the same time. I don't know if you felt that way, but... Yeah, I agree with both of you. Thank you so much for putting into words. <laughs> I just love everything that's been spoken in this conversation. Um, yeah, I feel like when it comes to nuance and echoing everybody, um, especially when it comes to the relationship of like visual and text, but the, the common thing that we see in terms of layout is like, some of the comics are very visual heavy. And for somebody who like tried to understand language and who spoke language, like English came to me like at four years old and I didn't even speak Spanish um, until maybe like high school years. But um, um, y'all are creating like visual literacy and it's so accessible in that way where so many people who speak different languages can still access the story and that's what I love so much about y'all's work um it just reminds me that um again this is like a really precious thing that you carry this story and the challenge too I think uh, for comics in, in short form too is like how can I reach to so many people I mean that might not be what we're thinking all the time when we're creating but if at least one person has like a moment especially if they come from a different like cultural experience or identity like that's when i feel like oof you know like you've created some semblance of kinship with that person i think empathy is a really powerful tool that stories are capable of engendering in a lot of us and i think that again i feel like we keep coming back to the, the what is good about the short form but i think that's one of the answers is that it really quickly introduces you to somebody else's soul in a way. Um, and I think like, for me, I think when we were writing our comic, it was sort of like, what, what is the, what are the emotions that we want to express? Um, and for me, it was like regret and um, uh, sort of the ways in which art, uh, we can sometimes express ourselves through art more freely than we can even to ourselves. Um, and there's something strange that happens to all of us, I think, as artists when when art speaks the truth before we're fully willing to confront it. Um, and so that's like the type of thing that I think we were interested in working through. Um, and I wonder if, um, 
it's so interesting to be kind of realizing that something that our comics have in common is that sense of of the art speaking for itself in a way. I, I don't know. I feel like I'm going a little off track, but I think that that's so interesting. The way that art, like art, has this this power to be so generous in the way that it speaks to people through that kind of empathy, through that kind of um, because it, it's so interesting to think about a queer story as being universal because we're so often taught that we're other or we're different. And so I think, Frida, I love, I love what you said. I think that's so true, that, that's so powerful when that empathy happens, even if someone on paper is very different from you, because difference is so much a part of the queer experience. Mm -hmm. so, like, break that down. That's so cool. Anyway, sorry, I'm just, like, appreciating your comment, but that's really neat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm appreciating everybody here. <laughs> this is such a loving panel. I'm, I'm into it. <laughs> So with, with art being such a strong component of the, the short form um, and you know, pointing out that there's this assumption that the, the queer story is, is something that needs to be spelled out more because it's supposedly not relatable as a universal uh, component um, for anyone that has done the art component of the of their stories um what is it about your artwork for your comics that is um universal and what is it about your artwork that is um very specifically queer i almost don't know because I feel like a guiding principle, uh, first of all, I think like, in my case at least, I don't presume to know. Um, <laughs> I just like don't know that that would make sense as something that I would need to actively figure out. Um, and in a way it could almost hinder, like trying to analyze what about the things that I write or like the things that I draw or the things that I create is you know just me and very specific to me and my community and like the queer community and what is for you know for the others um that's not a distinction that i want to be making necessarily um and i also found that like even if i wanted to i think that i wouldn't be able to and i think it's like the classic thing of like the thing the, the things that people end up finding really relatable or like charming or authentic about your work um is sometimes just like completely not what you thought would resonate. Um, I've, I mean, I really like relate to what Lynn said earlier, where it's like, and this is sort of what our comic is about as well. Um, your art reflecting a version of you that sometimes not even you are aware of. And so for, to me, giving some sort of answer personally, maybe you guys are gonna have amazing answer and I'll just look like a fool. But <laughs> to me, it's kind of like, I, I don't presume to know. And that's a good thing. I think that that's okay. I think everything. I think everything about the queer experience can be universal. I don't think there's a like. I don't think there's even a single thing that someone can't relate to from another direction, even if it's not exactly the same. I don't know. Maybe that's just big talk. <laughs> no, I lo I love that. I actually um, I, I do a ton of panels and moderation and kind of love it when I put a question out there and my panelists will like yeah no I don't think that's true at all <laughs> it, it you know it just helps remind us that there's um so many different ways of approaching things and, and different perspectives so so thank you for billing, being willing and uh excitedly confronting me on that <laughs> I appreciate it um is there anything else that anyone wanted to say about uh, the, the artwork. Oh, I, did, I didn't mean it as a confrontation. Oh, no, I... I just, I just got defensive because I didn't know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was, it was all friendly, whatever, whatever it was. Um, so, uh, I, I know that as a moderator is <laughs> leading a conversation, sometimes panelists feel a pressure to go where the moderator is, is leading them, and I guess I, I appreciate when somebody's willing to say, no, that's, that's, let's go in the opposite direction and let's look at it in this other way. Um, and I think that just makes it all the better. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so something that a lot of people 
usually ask is how does short form limit you? But what I actually want to ask is how do the limits of the short form benefit you? I know that's a bigger one. If you want to start with like what you feel is a limitation from short form, feel free to, to do that. But <laughs> I'm um, that. I, yeah. I feel like it, it's an interesting question because I feel like um, it actually helps me a lot in the sense that um, I think that I have a tendency to be very loquacious and to want to like go on and on and like actually it's, it's ironic that the comic is, is like without dialogue because I actually feel like dialogue is my favorite thing to write. Um, and I love like long conversations and like my day job is like studying Victorian literature, which is like the most long winded literature you can ever imagine. So it, in a way, what is helpful and kind of nice about the short form is that it breaks me out of my comfort zone. Um, and it, it forces me to step away from that stuff, which is ultimately aesthetic, which is ultimately not necessarily keyed into um, the, the like the theme or the heart of something, it's all just like my own vanity because I like using pretty words. Um, and then like usually through an editorial process that gets broken down and I get put in my place by a good editor, which is usually Alex. Um, but I think that one of the things that helps me in the, in the short form is that it, it forces me to put aside all of that vanity because I can't afford to, to tell a story in however many pages, like 10 pages. Um, because it just gets in the way, like I physically cannot fill up the space that way. So it's helpful in keeping you honest because it forces you to really think about what are the priorities of this piece of writing and what do I need to put at the forefront and what is ultimately dispensable. Because if it's dispensable, it's probably not necessary in the first place, even if I had an extra page. Um, so I think, I think that actually it does me a lot of good to do shorter comics in addition to longer ones. Yeah, I can say for myself that the short comic is definitely an opportunity to kind of try a different style or something that I've been, or a different influence or something that I've been thinking about and wanting to experiment with, but there's not really any room for it or it's not appropriate in the project that I'm currently working on. And so it's a good, like, I don't want to reduce it to a testing ground because it's obviously, you know, it's more than that. Um, but it's like, the flip side of that is like, it's, it's where you can kind of go wild um, and, you know, think about what serves the story um, as well as just like what you want to be drawing. And like, I do feel that, you know, in a 200 page graphic novel, like I said before, like not all of the pages are going to be great. And so, but in a short comic, it is actually important that they're all good. Um, but that, that, so that's like a challenge. It's a limit, I guess, but um, short stories that I have done are some of my favorite work that I've ever done because I really put in the effort 100% of the time and it didn't completely break me because it didn't take me two years. It took me a month or however long. Um, so I, you know, I have the ability to put the focus in um, and also like narrow down influences, narrow down my process and like make it really concise, I guess. So it's a limit, but it, it helps you too. Yeah, I also agree that some of my favorite pieces happen to be the shorter pieces. I've never done like a graphic novel, even though I'm trying to get there eventually, but <laughs> <laughs> there's just uh, something comforting about a short form. And I think it probably comes from me enjoying comic strips as like my first like entry point into the, into like the medium. Um, Big fan of Garfield uh, for the <laughs> longest time and learning like what does a beat mean like I kind of learned some of these techniques without understanding the vocabulary until I got older and got more serious about it and the challenge is also like how can I you know condense information especially if it's going to like be sort of like pseudo journalism slash memoir like how am I going to not make this feel so didactic and very like academic how can I also include the empathetic you know element to the story and if anything short form has also been teaching me 
how to be more confident um, when penciling like um, an idea and then like going to inking. I think it's taught me to be like a bit more confident too in my mark making. Yeah, that makes sense. I feel the same way. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Alice. No, no, I just feel the same way is all I wanted to say. (laughs) Um, I think it's it's interesting to bring up the question of genre, too, of, like, what goes into um, doing a memoir comic Mm -hmm. in five pages versus doing, like, a detective comic in five pages is probably really different, right? Um, I wonder if, if people could speak to... I'm just kind of curious about that, like, selfishly, how people manage the different expectations of the genre they're working in. So like whether it's biography or a memoir, um, or if, if, if some of your other work has done different genres, like what genres does everyone prefer to work in or read? And what are like the unique strengths of that genre? That might be too many questions at once, but um, I think we've been talking a lot about um, memoir and I'm curious if, if people want to talk more about what it's like to make a memoir versus like a detective comic or something. Oh man, I feel like I'm pretty like memoir heavy personally. Mm-hmm. There was like only ever one time I tried to do <laughs> this, this like a rom com that is based off of our relationship, <laughs> and I I think I shy away a lot of the times from exploring other genres because I always would tell myself like oh like I don't know how to make up characters or like really interesting people, but. Uh, it kind of goes back to the comment that was said earlier, like, there's always going to be a semblance of this part of yourself that you haven't been able to confront um, mm-hmm. in a story. So I'm hoping whenever the time comes back, I'll do that rom-com kind of <laughs> <people> story. But <laughs> I wonder if working with memoir will, will help when you, if you decide to go do a rom-com thing, it's like what you learn from the memoir will underscore um, not suggesting you need to work in another genre because memoir comics are like a foundation of, of, of short comics in general, but it, it's interesting to think about the different tools that you gain from all these these different genres. You know, I don't know if you felt um, like the the expectations of a certain genre when you were working or, or what, but... Um, I haven't written anything but memoir so it's really interesting to hear the thoughts about other genres and I think like uh, the challenge when writing memoir is like you have to be as honest as possible Mm -hmm. yeah and that's a really important thing that so when I try to write my comics I always try to look back and then like pause and then look back at um, and ask myself if I'm doing this right, if, and then I reflect. I do reflections too sometimes. Yeah, that's like one of the unique strengths of memoir too. I think for sure is that it. It's interesting to think. Whenever I've done things that are slightly more biographical, there's that reflection process that happens a lot more actively, and that's always really cool to see manifested in a comic. Versus, like, like Alex and I have done some stuff that's, like, pretty wild and off the walls and isn't really that vulnerable. It's more just, like, fun. Um, like, I made her, I made um, them do some, like, gangster comics and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. um, so it, it's cool to hear about different processes versus something like that where I was not reflective at all. <laughs> not really, like, thinking too deeply about um, a lot of the stuff we've been talking about here, about, like, condensing emotion and being truthful and honest. Um all of these genres kind of have different motivations and tools, which I think is really interesting. I do think it's interesting that you say, like, that wasn't necessarily very vulnerable, where I think some of our, at least to me, some of the most vulnerable work we've done was just, like, when we were completely letting ourselves have fun. Um, Yeah. So that, and that wasn't necessarily, or in our case, it wasn't autobiographical or memoir. It was just, like, when we're doing just exactly whatever we want in a way that's in, I think in our case, the most vulnerable, especially because we work as a team, Mm -hmm. Um, because it's really putting it out there. Like, this is what my heart wants. Like, this is what my heart desires. Um, And and it's really weird. (laughs) 
<laughs> and was very niche. And so that feels like, I don't know, I think there could be vulnerability to different people. I think it just means different things. And so I actually think that genre work in that way can sneak up on you in terms of how vulnerable it can be. Like, I actually think that the comic we did for for Come Together, so the, the comic that we're here for today, I mean we worked on that comic before I came out as trans. And so reading it now, I'm like, oh, it's actually like way more revealing than I initially thought. I was like, oh, we're just doing a little story about like a man painting another man. And he's like, and, and then it's like, oh, I, it was me. I, I was the, I was the man. I painted <laughs> the comic and it's like, oh, geez, that really did pick up on us a little bit. That's true. I think it's really easy to be dismissive of genre, and I think I'm I'm guilty of it because I just did it. Where I I was like, like oh yeah, all of our other stuff. You're just being <laughs> Canadian and humble. No, that's that's true. I do have the Canadian curse of like consistent politeness, but I think you're totally right. Like there is a way in which having that sort of um, the the plausible deniability of of like a premise. Like, this isn't about me, this is about a painter, or this is about a gangster, or this is about, uh, I don't know what other genres are, this is about an elf. Um, like, there is, there is a different kind of vulnerability that comes through there, because you have to choose how you represent yourself symbolically. Um, and how you choose to represent yourself symbolically is a different type of choice that I think it results in a different vulnerability, because it's not just what you're thinking, it's how you imagine yourself. Um, which is not to say that one is better than the other. They're just different ways of, I think, getting at the same form of self-reflection. Um, yeah. And yeah, Alex, I think you're right. I think that's the cool point about genre fiction. It does have that unique power to, to do that. And we are starting to get towards the end of our time for this panel. I always love that, like, the last 15 minutes are always, like, everybody's like, yeah, I'm now in Let's, uh, we're on fire about uh, maybe I shouldn't say that in California um, <laughs> um, we do have we do have two questions at least from our audience and then we'll make sure that everybody knows how to find out more about you before we close up for this particular conversation so the first question comes from Peachy Boy uh, asks would any of the panelists think of writing more longer form comics and what would they use a longer comic to convey that they cannot with short form comics? So to, to kind of simplify, um, would you consider doing long form? And if so, what would you use long form to, to write a story about that you wouldn't for short form? Um, I think this is actually not too tough to envision because Alex and I actually do do a longer form comic, um, Shade Runners, which is, I think what I like exploring in Shade Runners is like really, really complicated relationships and relationships that change over time and maybe even over the course of one scene. Um, relationships that are impacted by a variety of factors such as class and sexuality and gender and just what people want and what they don't want. Um, I think that you can layer in a lot in a short amount of time, but the longer form gives you more time to see that change just in different formats because you can you can really spend a lot of time on like more minor interactions depending on the priorities of your short piece. So for me, I, I like exploring really, really twisty, complicated relationships. And I think that that is, um, that is very fun to do specifically in long form because you can pace it out over over decades of time if you want to. So I like writing really, really complex, messy relationships between characters, and I think that's really fun to do in a longer format. Yeah, I think, um, so I think part, like to, to go off on one Lynn was saying, completely agree. And then also I think just an element of time, uh, of time spent reading is also really significant because there is a certain degree of like attachment to characters and to, you know, relationships and, you know, empathy for the characters that kind of builds with time, like the longer, kind of like how, you know, almost in the way that nostalgia works, 
um, where we feel like we grow up with something. And I think like I was just like listening to the discussion on the web comics panel and they were kind of talking about similar things as well, where it's like when you spend a long time with a piece, um, you do develop a more personal relationship with it rather than like a one time sitting down um, and reading a short comic, which could be again, like it doesn't mean that one is better because a short comic can also just be like a, a punch to the gut and just leave you. And that's also like a very meaningful experience. Um, but yeah, there's, I guess there's pros and cons and like, yeah, it's I, I, Both is great. Comics are just pretty good. But Ina, have you done a uh, long story, like long form comics? Uh, um, I haven't done any long form comics like my this short comic that I did like like the short comic that I submitted for this award was my first comic and I created my uh, my fake name <laughs> specifically because of it. So this is like my first work, and I would love to do long form comics, but for me right now it's just not safe. But yeah, I would love to explore that option. This is your first comic? Yes. Oh my That's god. So cool. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. Thank you so god. Much. <laughs> and to, to sort of follow up on that, it, this is a question that was addressed more specifically for Ina. Do you have any other short form ideas that you would like to work on in the future? Or maybe that you've discussed with your publisher? Either way, it um, didn't have to discuss it. No, <laughs> I don't think I have, uh, but I would love to explore more ideas um, because currently there's not many uh, works that portray the stories of queer Muslims from the global south. Like, mostly it's queer Muslims, but from, you know, like the Western world. And I think it's uh, it's... Um, it would be important to, you know, like explore our stories and our uh, for our own community. So, yeah. Well, so I, th I think that's always an inspiration for a lot of us is to make sure that there's representation for our experiences out there, and that's a big motivation for why we create. Um, the last question from the audience is: Do you find yourselves being prompted to write short form comics because? there's an anthology uh, coming out or a con coming up, or do you start with a short comic and then try to find a home for it? And that's from, from Becky. I think that um, we are, okay, sorry. we occasionally have started with, oh, sorry, Ina, you go first. I feel like I've always been going first. Okay, you can go first, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Um, I think for us, it's, it's mostly been motivated by anthologies. And then once in a while, we'll get an idea that we really like and we'll hold on to it for a while um, and try to fit it in with any anthology calls we see. So it depends, but I think it's mostly been motivated by what is what is being looked for out there. Um, for me, like I said before, I created that comic particularly because my editor asked for it. So like, and I used other, I used my real name for other comics, but for this Ina, Ina name, uh, there's only one comic that I've done so far. And um, yeah, I, I just want to leave that open for um, Bruna and Lawrence as well, because I know you also do some short form, and then and then we'll do our final wrap up. <laughs> Lawrence, you haven't said a whole lot. Go for it. <laughs> All right, King. I can share. Um, before I started doing submissions for anthologies, um, I mostly made zines. Um, I guess arguably there were more like um, like art zines slash per zines, like more personal stuff, more prose and just reflections and eventually those um inform like the stuff that i'm currently doing right now um and yeah i feel like there's like 
a small collection of uh, vignettes or just like shenanigans that I sketch out in comic strip form that I just revisited like when we were in shelter in place earlier um, in the Bay earlier this year. And I totally forgot like, oh, whoa, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff that need to be, that I think I that feel ready to be like, um, manifest into like a comic strip or like a short story. Um, Cause I sometimes tend to, I don't know, I, I sometimes realize, oh, I don't share a lot of work on socials. Um, but part of it is because I kind of want to let some ideas marinate a little bit more. Yeah. And hopefully they'll, they'll become something. <laughs> I like to give myself a lot of time to be patient with yourself. And, and Lawrence, um, I feel like every time I turn around, you, you've created something new. Um, does that come more from an internal motivation to want to create work or does that come from maybe more of a, a or at least in part an external motivation to um, like prepare for something like a convention or a or a submission for anthology yeah I was gonna say I'll be quiet because I feel like today's supposed to be about the finalists and everything you're saying is like Hearing you speak about your work as I've been sitting with it, trying to judge it, it just kind of, yeah, it brings more weight to it all. Also, my screen has been frozen for like half of this session, so I don't know when people are talking or not. <laughs> uh, but I use short form to uh, kind of manage my uh, mania. I have bipolar, so a lot of comics. It's the only way I know to convey uh, my mental health the way it is in my head. So everything moves really fast in short form. It's perfect for condensing those set, like the cycles, like the rapid cycles into a comic and then having people feel like, oh, it's not just a short form comic. This is like your brain in this one comic. And I think that's a good way to um, like use the medium for kind of like graphic medicine, if you will. And I, I that's think really cool. That's a graphic med medicine is such a cool way to put it. Yeah, that's a great phrase. I feel Do like I know exactly what you mean by that. I don't want people to be like, oh, they're trying to take it. It's like a whole, they have a whole, like, there's a web, you can check the website, graphic medicine, but they also have conferences and, like, there's just a whole, that's why it's hard to put things into categories. I feel like comics just, yeah. We can go on the mm -hmm. what comics can do, but like short form just covers a lot of like I never thought to make comics about mania as a way of like oh it's short because my manic episodes feel so short but they're really long but then condensing that into one story and then you read it and you're like why was this so fast and you're like oh this is how it is in your mind and yeah so. and Lawrence that's I, so cool I love that about what you said where you know graphic medicine the website and the genre is a noun but the way that you use it, you've turned it into an active thing. It, it, it is gra graphic medicine that you are utilizing and um, doing instead of instead of just a way to label something. And I, I think that's a great expansion on that word for, for all of us. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming for the panel today. I know there might be a few things you have uh, left to say, so you're welcome to join us on the official Discord, um, which is like it's all over social media it's on the various websites and facebook uh, pages that we've been posting to all weekend um, so hopefully you're able to find it <laughs> if you're not there already so if you can join us on discord to share more we would love that and then as we wrap up uh, we'll go through the same order that we did introductions and uh, just tell us how people can find more of your work and learn more about what you create and put out into the world and if you do have like one last little thing you want to say you can fit that in as well all right um so i'm at lynn keeps it real on twitter um and, uh, i think the main project that we have going right now that i would direct people to is shade runners so that's shaderunners.com that's how you can find further stuff uh from me um, the last thing I'll say is that Lynn said that we um, just do, like, pretty much do short comics for anthologies, but the first short story we've ever done was for 24-hour comic day, 
And that's when I realized, oh, I can, I can just like draw whatever I want. That was like the moment where you realize, you, like I realized that I could draw comics. Anyway, that was like, to wrap that up. Um, so I'm Alex Asan, and so you can find me at Alex Asan Art uh, on social media. And alexasanart.com is also my like portfolio website, and obviously shaderunners.com, like Lynn said, is our webcomic. And thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank you. You can find my work on Rinache. Uh, it looks like it's spelled as Brainache, but <laughs> it's a nickname my grandfather gave me since I was a kid. Um, so it's like Brina. C-H-E dot com. And same thing applies for Twitter and Instagram. And this was so lovely. Thank you, everybody, for just all of your effort and all of your energy that you poured into your work. Again, it was medicinal just to read it as much as it was to, I don't know. No. Being a part of this conversation also just reaffirms, like, Ugh, this is why we do this. <laughs> so thank you for making me feel, like, really really much at home right now. Yeah, I, I don't really have social media anymore, but I do this thing in the Bay Area called the Baileys, so you can find us on Instagram. It's like a group for queer cartoonists and cartoons of color in the Bay Area. Um, comics is hard to do, so the fact that y'all not just made a comic, but submitted it for someone to judge, <laughs> Uh, I just want to recognize like everything you put into your work. That's not an easy thing to do if people don't know to have your work judged by people you don't know for like stories you're telling that are personal. So just congratulations for making comics and giving something to the world. Cause we really honestly did love reading them and just like me and Brina would text each other and be like, Hey, did you read this one? Did you see that panel? And so, yeah, just thanks for being here. It's really hard. Um, I, I, I don't have any portfolio yet, but um, I can be reached at inaputribustari at gmail.com. Uh, thank you so much for being here with me today. Um, I learned so much from all of you. It's really an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So we'll put the schedule back up for uh, the rest of this weekend for you to check out what we have in store. And we'll wrap up with our panelists and get ready for the next and final program for the day talking about mainstream queer comics. So we'll be right back in just a few minutes.